Welcome to tutorial number 10. Unfortunately, it's our last tutorial in this series. So I'm gonna take the time today to go over my final tips and tricks and just the final things you need to know to get going on your level creating. So let's jump right in. Alright, so the contents of this tutorial are going to somewhat be in kind of a random order with little connection between them, but I'm going to really try to go over everything that I think you should know. And the first thing we're going to go over are net scenes. I just placed a ton of crates in my island level, and you can see having this many rigid bodies and this many net bodies can be a lot of fun in your level. But when I look in my console, I get this error, net scope level, net ID equals zero, might produce a data pack larger than 1200 bytes, which could fail to send on some platforms. Estimated worst case scenario of the scope is 5,316 bytes. Maximum safe limit is 1,193 bytes. So that's kind of computer jargon, but what it means is there are too many net bodies and it's going to break in multiplayer. So even though I have a net body on each one of these crates, in multiplayer, only the host will see them moving. Now, the easiest way to fix this is just delete a lot of these net bodies, a lot of these rigid body objects, until I don't get this error anymore. But that's not always what we, what we want to do. And a net scene can fix this scenario. So right now, by default, we only have one net scene in our level, and it's included in the level object by default, this net scene object right here. And each net scene can contain this 1,193 bytes. Not really important what that means to us. What is important is that there's too many net bodies inside this one net scene right now. So what we're gonna have to do is make multiple net scenes for this level to get the rigid bodies working in multiplayer. So what I'm going to do is inside the level object, I'm going to right click, create an empty, and I'm gonna call this net scene zero. And then I'm gonna give this the net scene component, just like that. And now that is going to replace this net scene. So I'm going to delete the net scene inside of the level object, and I'm going to duplicate this net scene three times. So I have net scene zero, net scene one, and net scene two. And important, I need to come in here and change the number of these net scenes. So zero is already zero. One, I'm gonna change the net ID to one. And net scene two, I'm gonna change the net ID to two. Okay, so now I have my three net scenes inside of my level and everything needs to go inside of these net scene objects. So I'm gonna put the first third of my level in net scene zero, the second third of my level in net scene one, and the last third of my level in net scene two. Now the issue with this is all of my rigid bodies, all of these piles of crates are still all in the same net scene. So when I go into play mode, I'm still getting the same error that net scene two has too many bytes in it. it. It's too many rigid bodies again. So what I need to do is I need to split my rigid bodies in between the net scenes. So I'm gonna put the first pile of crates in net scene zero and the second pile of crates into net scene one. And now because I still have too many crates, you can see I'm actually getting the net scene error in each one of my net scenes. I just have too many rigid bodies at this point. And so this brings up an important point. I would never really recommend having more than three or four net scenes, just because rigid bodies are the things in your levels that take the most computing power. And so they will make your level go really slow in the game. And so at this point, when I have my crates already split between three net scenes and they're still causing errors, I'm probably just gonna delete some of my crates. So I'm gonna just come in and I'm gonna delete the top two rows of my crates and I'm gonna see if that stops the errors, which it does. And it looks like there's not any of the red errors anymore except for the scene contains wrong net scene IDs. So right now, because I split my crates in between three different net scenes, I can have more rigid bodies and they're all going to work in multiplayer now. But if all of these were in the same net scene like that, 
I would still be getting my air right here, saying this net scene has too many rigid bodies in it. So moral of the story here is you just need to split up your net bodies into different net scenes. And again, sometimes when you get too many net scenes with too many rigid bodies, even if you have it organized correctly into these net scenes, it'll just stop working anyway because there's just too much going on. And so I would really recommend trying to keep your rigid bodies somewhat limited in your levels to prevent any kind of these multiplayer errors. Now, just for your information, each one of these crates, inside of their net identity script, they have a scene ID. And some of these numbers, when you're copying and pasting objects, they'll get kind of messed up. And that's why you get this scene contains wrong net scene IDs error. Luckily, the fix for it is super easy. All you have to do is export your level and all of those numbers will fix themselves during the export process. There, we can see after I exported it and hit play mode, that error is no longer in my game, which is really nice. Now, it's really important to pay attention to your console because there will be some important errors here that you have to fix, such as the net scene error. However, this don't destroy on load, that's always there. Nothing you, you need to do about that, it's fine. This one, you are trying to create a mono behavior using the new keyword. Again, it's always there, nothing you have to do. This one, null reference exception, something about the menu camera effects. Again, it shows up sometimes when you exit play mode and there's nothing you need to do there with that one. The white ones almost never matter. The ones you need to pay attention to are the red exclamation points that pop up. Those errors, when you see them, will be something that you usually need to fix. The next thing that I want to show you are net signals. So I'm going to jump back to this node graph that we made with the door. Signal unity events do not sync over multiplayer. However, opening the door using a signal unity event, this will sync because the door has a net body on it. And so whatever the cause of the door moving, the door's physical position in the level, that will work in multiplayer, regardless of any net signals. However, the light turning on and the sound happening, those are things that you need a net signal for. So it's really an easy fix. In this node graph, click quick add node, and then select net signal. And with live update turned on, you now have this net signal node. And you can really put this anywhere in your graph, whether it's right after the input or right after the signal producer or right before the signal receiver. Just try to get as few of them as possible while making everything sync in your graph that needs to. So in this situation, I'm going to put my net signal right here and it's going to turn the light off just like that. And I'm going to grab another net signal like this and I'm going to put it on the input for light on, just like that. Now opening the door and closing the door, those don't need net signals because again, the door's position is going to sync because of the net body on the door. This, turning the light on, turning the light off, and the sound need the net signal to make sure it syncs in multiplayer so that everybody can experience the sound and the light from this node graph. So if you're play testing your level in multiplayer and you have your friend host it and you're seeing not everything you expect to happen in the level is happening for you, check to see if you need to put any of these net signals before your signal receivers in your node graph. And since we're on the node graph, there is one node which is a little bit glitchy that you should be aware of. If you click quick add node, and then signal toggle, it will kind of break your node graph a little bit. Some things will just go wrong. And so what you need to do is find the object that has the node graph where the signal toggle got added, and you just need to remove that component. It can cause some issues sometimes. Moving on, another little trick that I use all the time is I come to my prefabs and I search for human, and I grab this little guy and I put him somewhere in my level. And I'll delete him before I export, but I use him all the time to gauge size because sometimes it's really hard to tell how big or how small these things are in my level. By placing this little guy, I can see exactly how big or how small the door I'm making is going to be when it gets exported to the game. Next tip, you can play around with these windows and make them any size or shape that you want. Like sometimes, for example, I take my scene and I pull it out like this 
and now my scene is a free floating window. And I have two monitors on my computer, so sometimes it's really handy to put this scene view on my second monitor. You can just imagine that right side of my screen is my second monitor right now. And that way I can have this open still and I can have a bird's eye view while I'm in play mode. So I can have the view of my character in play mode and I can also have the view from my scene on my second monitor of what's going on from above. And so that helps me test out my level in play mode quite a lot. I do the same thing with my node graph. If I want my node window to be big, I'll drag it like this and get a second window which I can fill my entire second monitor with my node graph like this, or I can take my scene view and I can split this window like this, where the top of it's the scene and the bottom of it's the node window. Or sometimes if I'm working with something complicated, I'll add a tab somewhere and I'll actually have two scene views open at the same time, just in case I need to see multiple things at the same time while I'm working with it. Like if this, this one, I'll make a top down view like that. So that when I'm moving stuff around, I can see both what I'm doing in this perspective and where it's going on the top down view. All right, next tip. Sometimes I wanna open my human fall flat game to test the level I've exported after I've been working in Unity. But when I go to Steam and I click on human fall flat, it says it's already running and so I can't open my game right now. It does this because I've tested my level in Unity, and so it thinks Unity is human fall flat, and I can't open my game now. All I have to do is close Unity. So I'm gonna Control S, make sure I've saved, and I'm gonna close Unity, save again, and now human fall flat will let me play it. A little tip here, if you've opened up human fall flat before you test anything in Unity, you can have the game open and Unity open at the same time. You just have to have opened the game first. All right, next tip. In the last tutorial and in this tutorial, we've talked about how important play testing your level in multiplayer is. And sometimes it can be really hard to find someone to host your level for you so you can test to make sure all your net scenes, net bodies, and net signals are working correctly. And the easiest way I've found to get someone to test my level is in the game, I go and I find what online games are playing right now, and I'll find a lobby with no more than like two players usually, and I'll connect to their game, and I'll strike up a little friendly conversation with them by talking with them in chat. I'll ask them something like, hey, I just made a new level, would you mind testing it with me? And almost always, I mean, the community is so nice, they're gonna say yes. I mean, sometimes it takes two or three tries for me to find a group of players who's willing to test my level with me. And as you can see, first try this time, I got a group who's willing to test a level with me. And I would just ask them to host the level that I made so that I can play with them and see if all of my net signals, net bodies, net scenes are working correctly. And it's also really nice just to watch them play your level. That way you can see if they're having as much fun as you thought they would and what you can change to make them have more fun. My next tip is that there's a console inside of the Human Fall Flat game which you can use while testing the levels that you've exported. You can access it by hitting the, the little tilde key above the tab key on your keyboard. It's that little squiggle. And inside of it, you can see in red, it shows up all the errors that would show up in your console inside of Unity. So while you're testing your levels, really be sure just to open up this console to see if any errors are happening before you hit that final publish button. The other thing your console is really useful for is if I type in C space zero, it will load me to the spawn point of the level. And let's say I wanna just jump straight to the third checkpoint. I can go C space three inside of my console and it'll jump me to the third checkpoint in my level. So this is really nice where if you wanna test your level that you've exported to the game, you don't have to play through the whole thing every time. You can use the console to jump to the specific checkpoint that you want to test. So that's super handy. My next tip is that learning how to cannibalize prefabs can save you a lot of work as well. To show you what I mean, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get the crane prefab. Now this prefab, it has this rope object and I want that part in my level. 
but I don't want this whole crane because the crane is not going to fit this at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and see, okay, I have my crane ball object, the rope target, which I'm guessing is going to be part of what I need. These two really are what's making up the portion of this prefab that I really want to steal. So I'm going to exit play mode. I'm going to take these two portions of the prefab. I'm going to put it inside of my level just like that. And then I'm going to delete the rest of that prefab. So I've essentially just stolen this small part of it. And you can see in play mode, I now have a wrecking ball and a rope in my level. And I can now take these and I can place them wherever I want. And so I just saved myself a lot of time by taking that right off the prefab. And now I can play around with this to see um, exactly how it was made and what it does. So the rope target, it looks like it's just a blank empty object. And inside the crane ball, we have a collider, we have some components here. And then inside of it, we have a rope object, which has a rope component. And so looking at this, I can kind of see if there's anything I want to play with. Like right now, it's the start body is this crane ball. If I wanted to change out the ball, to something else on the end of the rope, I could probably put a rigid body right there and switch it into the spot. And then I have all of these options for the rope that I can change. And so I'm learning a lot about the rope by doing this and I'll save myself a lot of time by not having to do it on my own. And I can even change the color of the rope if I want by taking my own rope material and dragging it onto that object just like that, which will make the rope the color I want instead of the red, which doesn't really fit into my level. So learning how to cannibalize prefabs and change them to what you want saves you a lot of time. And honestly, most of what I've learned in this game of how I create levels, I learned by doing this quite a lot. And many of the puzzles and objects in my levels are made just from cannibalized parts of different prefabs that I've put together. My next tip is about the Unity Asset Store. So it's this tab right here. If you've accidentally closed this tab, you can say window layouts default and it'll give you the asset store right here again. And in the asset store, you can search for anything that people have published on this store. I use it all the time for skyboxes. So by searching skyboxes, I can see all of these different skyboxes that people have published on the asset store. And the thing you'll notice is most of them cost money. So what you can do is on this pricing window right here, you can reduce the maximum price to $0 and then it'll only show you the free options. I use skyboxes from here all the time. For example, this Milky Way skybox, I can click on and if I really want it, it's free. I can hit download and then import and then import again. And now this shows up in my assets folder as whatever it was called when I imported it. And so back in my scene, I can go to Window, Lighting, Settings, and I can click here to change the skybox. I'm looking for Milky Way, which is my new skybox I just downloaded. And we can see I now have this fancy new space skybox. This doesn't fit my level, so I'm probably gonna undo that. But the point is you can use this asset store to find skyboxes, to find material packs it's really nice such as all of these kinds of materials that you can download and by using the unity store to find free assets you can save yourself a ton of time finding skyboxes materials even simple like low poly objects that you can put into your level there's plenty of free assets on here especially for what we're going to use it for my last tip is to not be afraid to publish short levels it's really important that you have energy for what you're making. This level, for example, I thought was gonna be super cool and I think it did end up really cool. It's this time control kind of level, but the problem is that it ended up being super complicated, like ridiculously complicated. I did not end up having as good of a time as I thought I would making this level. And so I published it really short. It only takes like three, like two minutes, three minutes to finish. And even though I got a really good response, I don't have the energy or the motivation to come back and to finish it. 
or to make it any longer. So what I guess I'm trying to say is you shouldn't force yourself to do anything you don't want to because the whole point of what we're doing here is to have a good time creating levels and to create levels that other people are going to enjoy. And so don't force yourself to do anything. Just like this, I've gotten multiple requests to come back and to make this level longer, but honestly, I just don't feel like it, so I'm not going to. Make sure you're having a good time making your levels. And whatever you enjoy making, focus on that. Just don't be afraid to publish what you have and, and let it be. And by all means, if you have worked on something, even if it's not completely finished, slap a quick ending onto it and publish it because I feel like people lose a lot of motivation if they spend a lot of time working on something and they don't end up publishing it. Just like I did here, make it into a short level. People will enjoy it for what it is. Focus on what you will enjoy doing the most. So that wraps up tutorial number 10, which is the last tutorial in this series. That does not mean that I'm done. I'm gonna be still doing a lot of new content for new creators. Um, I'm looking into doing more tutorials, more streams, and just keep checking the Human Fall Flat, the Curve Digital media channels, and whatever I end up doing in the future will be promoted there. I've had a great time making these, and I'm really excited to see what you all make. So my last request, if you make something cool, tweet it at me, tweet it at Human Fall Flat, or post it on the Discord. I'm really curious to see what everyone makes. So happy creating.